Oh, hello. This is Will Smile. <laughs> Here in Southville, because this is where George Ferguson lives, and uh, although I've only got his PR through the media, I do believe if there's any man in Bristol willing to confront cleaning up the mess that we've got here, it might be George Ferguson. He says he's not into party politics, he's into what's best for the whole community. That's good, because that's the policy I've been operating on for all these years. As you will know, if you've checked any of my material on the internet, I told you my name is Will Smile. I chose that name. It represents the man who tells the truth about cannabis, marijuana. Yeah? Now, I would say you shouldn't judge by appearances because if you caught me on a good day in my leather ankle length coat, you'd probably be a little bit more impressed by my appearance than by my current scruffy appearance, George. I don't have shaving or washing facilities in the tent. I haven't been able to change my shirt for two weeks. Uh, my underwear is stinking. Uh, my body is stinking and deteriorating. There are a lot of physical conditions. It's also extremely distressing for a cultured, educated, sensitive gentleman who has had his own profession, who has had several luxury flats fitted with audio-visual equipment such as the electric guitars and the amplifiers and the microphone, the microphone stands and the mixer and the uh, video cameras, the HD video cameras, the tripods of course. Yeah, and you need the backup amplifiers, yeah, on batteries so you can take it up the hill. Yeah, all of that in my flat with a 52-inch screen, etc., have had, yeah, sadly taken from me when I voluntarily made myself homeless. I, I'm sorry, George, it's this, it's really upsetting when you're handed a bit of paper that says, we will take no further care of you because you've made yourself voluntarily homeless. Now, I resent that. I resent that any human being should say to me, oh, check some of my videos. The channel on YouTube is called Will Smile. As I've been saying from the beginning, it's about cannabis. I'm not talking about cannabis as described in the media or government propaganda or even by all the social services in Bristol that pretend to deal with drug abuse. Well, the problem continues. Right. Can I ask Albert to come and see you on Friday morning? Friday morning is a long way away. If the tent starts leaking, I don't know what's going to happen because the ceiling is only two inches away from my face. And if you scrape a ceiling of a tent when it's raining, it then lets in water. Water getting into the bedding could be dangerous because the zip broke on my sleeping bag the other day, which means it will no longer zip up. It does not provide a bag. It is only a quilt. You cannot cover above and below yourself. If it gets wet, I think it will be tragic. I don't know if I'll be there on Friday. Okay. Well, I'll ask right. you to come up. Uh, I don't think outreach is acting fast enough because I would ask you to imagine, sorry, I forgot it was you, George. I was thinking of the other people that are between me and you. I've had a lot of time trying to communicate to them and being ignored. That's why I've become a bit louder. But... Uh, I'm not very well, I'm not looking very far into the future. I think if you try to imagine for a moment yourself at the age of 63 when you have a compound health problems and tragically those that you loved and even the one you married have gone and taken what they could when they went, leaving you with little and those few people who presented themselves as friends when you were in distress have managed to acquire most of the rest of your possessions. Right, that's the position I'm in. It's, uh, try to imagine it, you know, like you wake up, you're in a tent, 
the air bed I had was leaking. I had to get a new one oh, yesterday. Oh, oh, it meant that I was waking up on the solid ground every day with very sore hips, both sides, because you, you turn around trying to get away from the pain, so you get the pain in both hips. It's terrible on top of all the other pains, right? And uh, when you wake up, I find I need to go to urinate and defecate. That's difficult in a tent. I can't even sit up. I can get a piss in a bottle without being observed by uh, anyone. Uh, that's alright, but I cannot defecate easily. Uh, or brush my teeth, or wash my hands, or my feet. My feet haven't been treated for two months. They're very, very sore. But I hobble along on them till I get to a toilet. There's not many toilets in Southville, which means usually spending money. I'll probably be coming into the tobacco factory for a wash and a shave soon if I, if I don't uh, get arrested or anything. It's not very pleasant living on the street because what do you have for breakfast? You can't plug in a kettle. Uh, two pound for a cup of coffee. Five pound ninety five to get a breakfast. It's not really good. Well, I think outreach better reach out. I would expect somebody to come running up and go, I treat you with as much respect as I would treat your, your fa my father. Right, yeah, think about your own father. Think about your own mother. Think about a person that's grown up to be civilized, sensitive, follow uh, social customs, a bit of decency, a bit of self-respect, a bit of keeping yourself clean and smart. Right? So think, as a person who's now sleeping in a tent, in a vulnerable position, with a puppy, which is in season, that means she's right up for sex all the time right now, right? Now think what that might be like, like, you can't brush your teeth, that's the teeth that are rotting, that's the teeth that are going to have to come out, that's the last four teeth I've got. That's, that's upsetting. And then, what do you do with your day? Oh, if I go down to Bedminster at nine o'clock in the evening, there are free sandwiches, and they don't even require proof that you're actually homeless. What a wheeze, eh? You can get a cup of coffee and sandwiches without paying them and meet some other people. Some of them quite respectable. They're the ones with the motor cars handing out the sandwiches. Is that what I want to do with my life? After going to university and studying psychology? After spending 10 years studying parapsychology? After running a couple of businesses? After being a landlord with two properties making me uh, quite wealthy? due to the speculation and the property prices. Is that what I want to do? Go and see about the free sandwiches here? Go and stand in a queue in the compass centre to get my washing done? Five hours listening to junkies telling me life is shit. There's no happiness to be found. I don't want to associate with people like that. I would rather be dead. Oh yeah, if I could do a loud spectacular suicide, I would do it. But hey, the media are controlled. I can't get the news to anybody. I'll be fucking lucky if I get George to listen. Sorry about that, George. I'll be lucky if I can get George to listen to me without going through all these sycophants and parrots and fake employees that are supposed to be handling the problem. I'm saying, George, the people that are handling housing in Bristol at the moment are fiddling, making a lot of money, keeping people in the victim position, shuffling them around from one victim position to another at very high rents that's going into private pockets from public funds. It's disgusting. And uh, if you want to help me, you better run, because I'm near dead. I want to help Bristol. That's why I'm staying alive. I want my experience to come to good use for other people. So you tell the outreach, come and find me, because I might not be there for much longer. I might go somewhere noisier, more conspicuous. It's not actually suicide, but I'm going to die very publicly. George, can we get it cleaned up, please? This is a beautiful city. we just got to get the corruption out the road. You don't want to leave your housing in the hands of fat, greedy, selfish, Cokeheads who are treating life as a holiday and treating their clients as animals. Thank you. Any comeback?